Hey YouTubers, it's Fly Rider Sean coming at you today from another one of my favorite little rivers, the East Branch Croton River in beautiful Brewster, New York. This is another one of those rivers that's open year round. It's a great place to fish in the off season, usually not too crowded if you can come on a weekday. So today I'm going to give you a little tour and then I'll get to doing some fishing. I'm all suited up as you can see wearing my frog tog waders and my old Cabela's vest, which I keep having to sew uh, every time the pockets rip open because it's probably about 20 years old, but it's still the old style that I like. So the East Branch Croton River is a um, tailwater river, which means that it gets cold water from the reservoir. So you can come even on a hot summer day, it's great. And the water temperature is nice and cold can't wet wade though you can wear waders if you want to fish this river you have to have a DEP reservoir fishing license which you can get from the DEP's fishing website right so today I'm going to just give you a little tour I'm going to be fishing a nine foot five weight Reddington um, rod that I recently purchased it's got a medium action which is good for me because all my fast action rods were giving me serious tennis elbow and I don't even play tennis. All right, so let's begin our little tour. This shows the river from the Sodom Bridge area. Okay, and I'm just gonna walk down river as best I can without killing myself. You can see it's a beautiful little river. Um, Sorry about that, folks. I do have a new editing program on my computer, so hopefully I'll be able to uh, edit out some of my little bloopers. One thing you'll notice about this river that's different from the last river we looked at, the Mianus River, is that there is a lot of deadfalls in this river. And you really have to be, you know, someone who likes to hike, likes to step over fallen trees, Sometimes you gotta make your own path to the water because the path you used last year is no longer accessible. But it does have a lot of riffles and, you know, um, big open water. This is a spot. Now, one of the um, guides that I like to use comes from Croton TU. Okay, you can get it from their chapter. It gives all the information on the, the rivers that are connected to the reservoirs in the Croton area. And um, another book I like to use is called Good Fishing Close to New York City. And that book is a great resource. It, it's a pretty old book. You can still get it on uh, Amazon. I'll put links in the description. And the guy's not strictly a fly fisherman, but he does have a lot of information um, that I didn't find in the TU book. And, uh, but I did find it to be very useful. Here I am stepping over another giant lay down. Of course, I'm fishing on a rainy, drizzly day, my favorite type of weather. All right, so close to the road, up the river, here's a little view, there's the bathtub pool, which I'm not going to fish until maybe late in the day. That area gets a lot of pressure. Um, there are some nice fish that like to hang out in there, but they do see a lot of flies and it can be tricky. If you come here during the summer, be prepared to fight through sticker bushes. Um, if I thought it was, was a good idea, I'd come with a machete because even now in the fall, I'm getting caught up in branches as I walk through. Okay, but you can, you can make it. It's a little tricky, especially if you're trying to film. All right, as you go. Here's another section of the river. Okay, I have caught some nice fish in here using a nymph. Um, I used to really hate nymph fishing because I'd always get snagged and have to break it off. But now, since I'm willing to risk my life and limb to get my nymphs back, I'm starting to like nymph fishing a little better. And I have caught some nice fish. I was reading this article about um, not using strike indicators, you know, feel the force like a Jedi. And I tried it over here in this particular area, like the end of the season last year, and uh, caught a nice fish without using an indicator. 
really nice fish using uh, two flies and um, he hit the dropper. Today I have on a, um, a big stimulator, size eight, which worked really well for me at the Mianus in my last video. You're not gonna see me fishing because of course I'm holding my phone with one hand and my rod in the other hand. Um, bugs are bouncing off my face, so there could be a midge hatch going on. I don't see any fish rising, but we'll see. Well, right now, I have a big size eight stimulator and a very small size 20 rainbow warrior. And I'm hoping that the fish will find something to like between those two. And I just had to fight to unstick my rod. You really have to have a lot of patience if you're gonna come here because it's not like, you know, um, the Connecticut River in Long Island where all the trails are groomed and you're just walking around, bouncing from uh, place to place. Here, you really gotta put your time in and uh, it's worth it though. The further down river you get, the less pressured those fish are gonna be. I, I have seen guys, regulars, and you can always tell the regulars because here's what they do. They show up, they have on a very small caddis, like a size 16 or 18 LCAT caddis. They make a few casts, pick up a couple of fish, and then they leave. Like maybe half hour, 40 minutes later. That's a really nice edge pool right there. You can see it's making a turn and going right under those branches, a nice undercut bank, which I'm going to have to come back and try that. I'm not fishing right now because as I said, I'm giving you the tour. Okay, a lot of laydowns. The famous pools in this section of the river are Phoebe's Hole and Brady's Bend, which is Brady's Bend is about as far down as I go because you come back onto the Sodom Road, not too far from the Brewster uh, Subaru. Oh boy, that was a close one. Whew, man, just tripped over a rock. <laughs> oh boy, I'm not cut out for this. Maybe Santa will get me a GoPro for Christmas and I'll have my hands free. Uh, this pool can fool you right here. You'll see rises and you should always fish to a rise no matter what, but a lot of times, their um, sunfish. For some reason, the sunfish gather in this pool and drive me crazy because I start fishing to the rises and I get sunfish. But there are other fish. There's also giant carp in this uh, section of the river. I mean, I've seen, seen them really big. Um, you can spin fish. It's a no kill in the winter, which is great. So you can't keep any fish in the winter after October 15th, I think, or something. Okay. Um, not seeing any activity yet on the water, but really, really nice view. All right, I'm still trekking through the woods. So it's not too bad for the first quarter mile or so. And then, inexplicably, try saying that fast 10 times, the path comes to an end and you just have to push your way through. And, you know, like I said, the further down you go, the less pressured you're gonna be. Now over here, we're coming to one of those little um, spillways. And if you read the Croton book, they tell you that one of the things they like to do is to um, come to one of these little spillways, I guess it's from rocks or whatever, and throw a nymph in the calm water and then just let it kind of tumble down into there. I've tried that a few times. Sometimes it works. A lot of times you get snagged. As I said, if you're willing to go and retrieve your fly, um, you won't be so um, worried about the snags. Uh, so because it's a tail water, the temperature doesn't vary that much in the winter. So, which is nice. Um, you can fish it all winter long. I've had some really good fishing in the middle of December. But it can be treacherous hiking around here. It's a lot of rocks and... You don't have super, super deep pools um, like the Mianus, at least I haven't found any that I couldn't wade through. 
but um, but you do have pools deep enough certainly to hold over fish and this this river does have holdover fish unlike the Mianus which may have some holdovers but some people have said it does but personally I don't think so um, because I think it just gets too hot in the summer which you don't have to worry about here because it's a tailwater. All right, my rod stuck again. Sorry for the glitches. If I can get my editing program on my computer that I just found out I have, I'll probably leave a lot of this stuff out. Okay, so we're still hiking along. There's a lot of trails through here. I'm not sure what all of these trails are for. Some of them might be for um, people to just come in and hike. I don't know if people are, uh, I guess it would be pretty hard to mountain bike in this stuff because you really don't have a smooth section of trail anywhere. You easily break your leg if you're not careful. And I am trying to be careful. And you always come to like three paths, you know? Like Hansel and Gretel. Now, I don't have any breadcrumbs. So which way do I go? Every year I have to try and remember now which was the better path to take because sometimes you go through a path, it looks right, and then all of a sudden it dead ends and you gotta go back. I guess you could try and walk all through the water. I generally don't like to do that because number one, it spooks the fish and uh, stuck on a branch. So I'm giving you the full experience here okay have to go and get my my line off a branch so you just got to be patient it's part of the experience when i'm out fishing i don't think some things are good and some things are bad i think hey i'm out fishing it's all good right it's all good so here i am not going to go on too much longer folks but i think you're getting a pretty good taste of what this river is like. I'm gonna to try to put as many links in the description as I can to help you out with some info. Okay, but pretty soon it's gonna be time for me to do some fishing. It's nice, rainy, perfect. This is a really nice looking pool. If there aren't fish in this pool, I don't know where they would be. There's another one of those lay downs got trees constantly falling down here okay you know if a tree falls in the forest does anyone hear it if no one's there no but with my luck it might smack me in the head so I got to keep my wits about me okay thank you for watching this video if you like please hit the like button and subscribe encourage me to do some more I have a few other rivers in mind that I think you might enjoy seeing this is Sean from the Long Island Fly Rodders, lifly over and out.